you just fine? I can. Awesome, awesome. Well, first of all, so my name is Andrew, just so you know. And first of all, it is a huge privilege and honor to just be speaking with you because I'm a huge follower uh, of you on all social media platforms, TikTok, Instagram. I always watch your videos, man. Your energy you bring to the sport, it's just awesome. So as a fanatic myself, it's just really cool speaking to you right now. So I guess I'll hit you with my first question. So I did, uh, I did a little research, you know, heading into this interview, and I noticed that before before all of this started for you, you owned a chimney sweep and masonry business. Is that correct? That is correct. So I guess my question is, just tell me a little bit about your transition from being a business owner to becoming what everyone knows you now as the Philly sports guy. So, I, I mean, I've always been an entrepreneur uh, and throughout my life. I mean, since I left the service, I was in the Navy back uh, in 1990. Oh, well, thank you for your service. I appreciate that. And I, I, I've always kind of, you know, I've done different jobs and things like that. And just, you know, never got the hang of working with other people. You know, like not, not like that, but just not working for somebody else. You right. Know? And ultimately, uh, I, I've started a number of different businesses, some of them that kind of worked out well, some of them that did not. Uh, the chimney business was something that worked out uh, amazingly well for a good amount of time. And then ultimately, uh, I just couldn't find anybody who wanted to work. And with COVID and everything, it just kind of put everything to put me to the wall saying, well, I could continue to do this by myself, but picking up rocks and putting them down sucks. So right. <laughs> I wound up, uh, you know, I, I had a buddy of mine who had a production company. And he knew that I got painted up for Eagles games for years. And, you know, we were just talking about it. And he was like, you know, I think that you would be great at doing like a podcast or a show that we should talk about. And initially it was going to be uh, Jamie has thoughts. Because if you would tell me a situation, I'd have a thought about it. I'd be like, oh, well, you know, here's what I think about this. And it would, you know, kind of go like that. Right. So, and... And, and then, but it would always, like, we always just talk about sports and such. And, and ultimately, he saw me and I got recognized at an Eagles game, uh, the playoff game with the Saints, uh, that Alshon Jeffrey missed the ball. Right, right. And uh, he's like, you know, maybe the Jamie has thoughts thing is, is kind of a, a part of this, but your energy is so amazing. You're like the Philly sports guy. Oh. You see if that name is available. And it was. And then it's so it was like the Eagles guy and it was Eagles thing. And I was doing that. And I'm like, but I, I'm not just Eagles if I'm the Philly sports guy. I love all sports anyways. So maybe I need to go to a, a Phillies game or a Flyers game. And I did. And it you know, now all of a sudden it just started to grain a lot of momentum. It's, it's, you know, it went from Eagles to Flyers to Phillies to Sixers and Union and, you know, the Wings and uh, the Cornhole team, the professional Cornhole team. Wow. Here, the fr uh, Frisbee Golf, you know, the Frisbee Golf, uh, Ultimate Frisbee team. Uh, so if you're a Philadelphia franchise, a professional sports team, uh, I can put together a look for you and go and, and support the team. And it gives people an opportunity who don't go to sporting events or uh, can't make it because of money or timing. Uh, and it gives them the opportunity to kind of watch the game through my eyes and get excited through me uh, when they're not there. That, that's awesome. And that, that shows commitment, by the way, is that because I didn't know that you went beyond, you know, just hockey, baseball, obviously the Eagles. That's cool to see that you're getting involved in everything Philly, because like you said, people can see the game through your eyes. And I noticed that through the way you use your social media, because I'm not even an Eagles fan. I'm everything Atlanta. So I'm a Falcons fan. I, I know. I know. <laughs> but it's I'm not even an Eagles fan. But yet when I see the posts that you make pregame, you know, post game, it even gets me fired up. And I'm like, 
that must be amazing for someone who's an Eagles fan, unlike myself, just seeing, you know, your perspective of everything. And I guess that's going to kind of segue me into my next question, because I'm sure, you know, you are from Philadelphia, of course. So I think you've probably heard or at least seen that Philadelphia fan bases often receive kind of a bad reputation for being cruel and discourteous. But yet when people think of the Philly sports guy, they think of passionate yet respectful at the same time. So I guess how important is it to you to kind of revise the way fans express themselves during games? You know, it's funny that you mentioned that. Obviously, ESPN put out there, put my face out there as Philadelphia as the most annoying fan base. No Uh, way. (laughs) uh, Yeah, it it was put out there. uh, I want to say we were in Kansas City, so uh, the middle of November. uh, The NFL NFL players, uh, you know, voted, and they voted Philadelphia as uh, the most annoying fan base. And ultimately, uh, you know, when I got that, when I saw that, I made a video, of course, and said, hey, if we're the most annoying fan base, we're doing our job. Amen. We're doing something (laughs) right. Because if the NFL players are annoyed uh, about us, that's what we want. We want them to feel uncomfortable. Philadelphia is a a very passionate city in general. We are blue collar. uh, We are hardworking. And we put our hearts on our sleeves for our sports teams, you know, and, you know, we only have a certain amount of championships. We know we're not the best team all the time, uh, but we're going to be loud and proud and make anybody who's coming into our area a little uncomfortable. So uh, my suggestion would be is that if you are coming into Philly as an opposing fan, you should wear some thick skin. That being said, I'm very, I'm very astute to non-bullying. I don't need to bully anybody because they like a different team. And I, I try to change the narrative that the national media has on Philadelphia about that type of thought process that we're going to come in and if you come in and wear in different colors, we're going to beat you up and you need to protect your life and things like that it's really not like that there's there's always a couple of bad seeds in the bunch you know and ultimately uh, i usually tell people if you don't have to uh, if you don't you know involve yourself with a jerk you don't have to become a jerk and that's that's how it is because ultimately alcohol sometimes will get the better of some people and ultimately you can't talk. It's no longer talking about the game. It becomes personal. And listen, there's nothing ever about my teams. The, the, none of these teams are my mother. I don't have to defend <laughs> their honor. You know, if you like your team, love your team. Uh, I always root for my team. I very rarely, you know, Dallas Cowboys being a little different, but uh, I very rarely will talk bad about another team. I'm just always supporting my team. And that's what's sometimes hard for people to understand because I'm yelling at the phone. You know, it's like, what's up, everybody? It's the Philly sports guy, and my team's going to win, and the other team's going to lose, and we're great, and you're not. (laughs) And, you know, go birds, yeah. And I love that. They, you know, people are like, oh, well, you're just, uh, you know, an idiot or a clown and whatever. And it's like, I can take all of that stuff. That stuff is simple. And I want people to banter with me. I want people to come back at me. I want them to keep it about, I want to keep it on the field. You know, it has nothing to do with me personally. Anybody who knows me personally knows that I'm a good guy. I spend a lot of time at charity. I, I you know, I dress up in face paint to make things easier for make it easier to watch a game with me because I'm tough to watch a game with. If I'm not wearing face paint and I'm yelling and screaming and doing all the things that I do with the face paint on, you'd look at me and be like, uh, calm down, buddy. You know what I mean? Or, or like just that guy is, is, you know, just a jerk. You know what I mean? I don't want to be near this guy because it's too much. The face paint all of a sudden makes it okay. So uh, by doing the face paint, it gives me a different type of microphone. And most, and most of the times I want to use that microphone not just for the passion I show in sports, 
but for good in the community as well. That's that's actually a very like interesting point of view. I never really thought of it like that, but I really liked the way you said that because you know if you were to go, you know, just as yourself, let's say you're at a Phillies game, throw on a T-shirt and maybe a hat and act the way that you do, people might interpret that a little differently compared to how they see you now with the mohawk color, the face paint, because it kind of gives you that freedom. Like they see how you look, so they're gonna expect you to act at a higher level compared to just an average guy. So that's actually very interesting. I never really thought of it that way, but that's really cool. And to your point, like you said, like in a way, like there's a reason why fans in, attend games because in a way they're kind of a part of the game as well. And I know people kind of bash Philadelphia sport fan bases, but in a way I respect them because it it does add a different intensity to the game when a road team visits Philadelphia because a fan base is just more involved. And I wish every fan base was like that, to be honest with you, because it truly gives y'all the home advantage in sports. And, you know, and like you said, I know you can relate to the Cowboys because, you know, like you said, it's different when it comes to the Cowboys because, come on, it's the Cowboys. But, right. you know, in baseball, I'm a big baseball guy, and obviously I grew up a diehard Braves fan. It was just my second nature to hate Philly fans not you know hating personally but you know during the game you know we're enemies but at the end of the game we're all brothers because you know it's not just for the fun of the sport but so when I go to these Braves and Phillies games like for example I was at the NLDS game two last year and you know it's just the energy you know was different because it's a playoff game you know I see Phillies fans I yell at them but then at the end of the game I had the opportunity to meet you I ran into you you know exiting the stadium and I know you see thousands of fans throughout the season so you probably don't remember me but you were just a cool guy to talk to and I was like man I just wish every fan could be that way but anyways I'm gonna give it off to my brother now he's got some questions he'd like to ask you we're gonna sound the same I promise you we're different we're just twin brothers <laughs> that's okay and listen you know what the best thing about going to those games in Atlanta is I, I, I have a lot of fun I think it's a great stadium down there I've had a blast uh, talking and and bantering with the fans we went back and forth uh, and we lost that game and it was okay you know what i mean it's like after all was said and done they learned that the passion doesn't result i don't wear the losses i don't need to you know curse i don't i don't even drink during the game because there's too many kids around and i like to take the pictures with them right and i don't want any of the families or the you know parents to be like this guy smells like a brewery i don't want this around <laughs> my child or anything like that so I, I i get it and i appreciate that and i think that's why i am I, I have a good following in atlanta and they love me down there or they love to hate me Right. <laughs> right. Love to hate you. Right. But anyways, man, that was awesome talking to you. I'm officially going to hand off to my brother now, but just thank you for taking this time to answer my questions. Oh, my pleasure. So this is Chase Jefferson. This is the uh, the better twin brother. But um, like, Older or younger? I'm actually younger. I'm two minutes younger. So How about that? Beat me by two minutes. So it's you crazy. slipped on out. I think about that. Pretty he, much. She she had to push it. She had to push really hard to get him out. You came right out after. <laughs> hey, pretty much, pretty much, pretty much. But uh, like Andrew said, it, it's an honor talking to you, man. You know, just like he said, man. You know, we, even as an Atlanta fan, I know you're a Philly guy, but we just love you, man. We appreciate all you do. So. I'm going to go ahead and jump into my first question, which I heard you mention, you know, how heavily involved you are in charity. And I know that one of the charities you are really involved with is the Mascots for a Cure charity. And I'm, I'm just interested to hear more about your involvement with that campaign and what inspired you to get involved. Uh, unfortunately, that that uh, charity uh, is no longer in existence. Uh, it was one of the charities that actually got me started as the Philly sports guy. Was a, a great charity. I, it just uh, unfortunately mascots don't talk, and it <laughs> makes it a little bit harder to try to do the promotion for that. So things have kind of changed a little bit with that one specific. Uh, but it really was a great charity, and it meant to uh, bring uh, smiles to children who uh, were in hospitals and, and you know, were dealing with cancer or other illnesses that uh, were dire or, or had dire consequences to them. Uh, and the families would always, you know, they're, they're always there and it's always seems to be you know, humdrum and, and very morbid almost. And that charity 
like brought smiles to faces. So it was a wonderful charity to be a, a you know be a part of uh, for a while. Unfortunately, uh, the owner the owner of that charity uh, couldn't do it anymore, and, and it had to dissolve. So, but it's it's one of the ones that uh, it, it's kind of spawned how I go about, and I do a lot for other children's charities. Uh, one that I have I, I have done most recently is that we are we have a Dummers group, and if you're from Philadelphia, uh, there is a Mummers parade that happens every New Year's. But the Dummers, I live in Delaware County, Pennsylvania, which is a suburb of Philadelphia, and so we started this group uh, during COVID when they weren't going to have the Mummers parade. And what started out as 13 guys walking around uh, drunk on New Year's turned into a charity where we are doing exactly what Mascots for a Cure was doing, uh, more boots on the ground. We get a local family who has a child. Uh, this year, the child had leukemia, uh, and she's been fighting a really tough battle. And we got boots on the ground. We were able to help the family out and raise money for that family direct and also get a bunch of people together and, and have a parade, which is, is just a, an amazing thing to watch the community come together. So that is in the the thought process of Mascots for a Cure, although it's no longer Mascots for a Cure. It's it's very similar in kind of the action that we take. Well, that's, that's really awesome, man. And that's one of the reasons why we all love and appreciate what you do because, again, you're not just involved with the sport, but you're involved with the community. And just seeing you step out and do these type of things, man, it's very, it's very inspiring, I got to say. And we, re- we all really do appreciate everything you do in terms of that. So, um, so I'll go ahead and jump into my next question. And I'm really interested to hear this one because, like you were talking about, you know, you – attend set all kinds of Philadelphia sporting events, the Eagles, Flyers, Sixers, the Philadelphia Union, and all those other major sporting teams that are based in Philadelphia. So out of all of the games you've ever attended, do you have a personal favorite? That's a tough one. Uh, the 2008 World Series, you know, I was literally 13 rows from the field. Uh, I was not the Philly sports guy at that time, uh, so I wasn't painted up. Uh, but it was just an amazing time to deal with that whole, you know, the rain coming and, you know, let's right. stop the game in the seventh <laughs> inning and then get back three days later to finish that game and then to celebrate all night long because really what it did was it gave us, you know, instead of the game ending at 11 o'clock and us going all night long, it ended at 9.30, and we get, we still went all night long. So it gave <laughs> us more time to actually have the party and such. Uh, so that was really one of the most amazing games uh, that I've been to. Uh, the other one that I could say that was really, um, you know, and, and, and it's interesting that it's baseball because uh, I was at the, the Bryce Harper home run, the swing of his life. Oh, wow. Home run. Wow. Uh, literally, if you watch that, if you watch the real video from that, uh, you'll see me as they shoot. They sh- show me. They show another person holding up a Harper, you know, head, uh, one of those fat heads. <laughs> yeah. And then and then you see him swing and hit the home run. Wow. And so I will live in it, you know, forever attached to that now not all the videos have that but if you watch the actual video of what occurred it was they showed me they showed a a fat head of harper and then harper swings and hits that home run and it's one of those moments that is just so electric to me uh that it was it you know it's one of those feelings you'll just never forget that, that's crazy, man. And me seeing just a replay of that home run, it gives me chills. So I just can't imagine what it felt like to be there personally. But um, so unfortunately, we only have about 10 more minutes left to do this interview. So if it's all right, I'm going to go ahead and shoot you to Jackson Volt. He's going to be asking you the closing questions to uh, close out the interview. If that's OK. Let's do it. All right, Jackson, you have the mic. Hi, Jamie. I, re- I appreciate you taking time out of your day to do this interview. Oh, it's my pleasure, really. For my first question, I know you're big, especially in the Philly sports community, and I'm sure you've came in contact with Philly sports legends 
who was your favorite athlete or sports personnel to meet and why? Wow, that's a tough one. Uh, there's There's been so many. Uh, a lot of these guys are, are down to earth, and I don't I don't ban girl. You know what I mean? I'm not somebody who's going to pine after these guys. These guys are human beings just like us all. And, and I, the hardest part about being the Philly sports guy is when I meet somebody and I'm painted up. It, you know, when when I am painted up at a game, I'm on, and, and I don't get a chance to get off. When a player sees me and I'm painted up they feel like they need to be on and I try not to deal with that so some of my best uh, interactions with some of these players are when I'm not painted up and I get to be able to talk and deal with them as human beings uh, Eric meeting Eric Lindros was an amazing thing for me uh, you know I have some monster hands uh, you know and that guy's <laughs> hands like double mine uh, which is uh, like amazing uh, and then I got to shake hands with Will Chamberlain before he passed away. Wow. Uh, again, something that you you never really realize how somebody could, you know, just light up a room when they walk in until you meet somebody like that too. Like I I was young at the time and I was like I, I is that is that him is that him is that him? Oh, that's him. You know, and you just knew right away that that's that's who it was and and i said uh, sir i just need to shake your hand mr chamberlain i need to shake your hand and he shook my arm because his hand was that big as well uh the the players of today are a little bit harder to get to and get to know because of the money and social media makes things a lot more difficult uh but i you know, any interaction that i've had with a player on a one-to-one -one level or, or on a human basis has really been good. Like I said, these are good guys that are out there, and they just get to do what they love for a living, playing kids' games. That's amazing. Hey, maybe one day I'll get to meet an Eagles legend like Brian Dawkins. We'll see. <laughs> he was amazing to meet as well. I met him uh, at his charity. I got to do a, a small TikTok with him. Uh, just uh, we have a lot of in common because I, I do my best not to curse and he's never cursed. He is very devout, uh, you know, God fearing man and just always wants to do things the right way and wants to, you know, use his voice for good. And I can align myself with a lot of those values. So it's really uh, it was really amazing to meet him. And again, somebody who his personality doesn't even have to talk just overflows the room that is amazing my second question and final question of the interview what are your genuine thoughts these guys these three around me do not understand what a super bowl winning team looks like <laughs> but what are your genuine thoughts about the philadelphia eagles this season and who are your super bowl predictions uh i feel that you know the the season started off great uh, it, most recently, it hasn't been so great. Uh, I think that some of this is, you know, self-inflicted. Some of it is not. You know, I think that this last game was not. It was just a rest period. They didn't really care about this game, getting ready for the playoffs. I feel like that we're going to beat Tampa Bay. And if everybody holds served, we could run into a you know, San Francisco team that may have a little bit of rust on them. That being hey. said... I'm not as confident San Francisco's got a great team this year. I kind of feel that it's going to be them and the Ravens that do make it to the Super Bowl, and I do have the Ravens winning it this year. I have for some reason thinking that the Harbaugh's, especially since Michigan won, I wasn't real happy about that either. Uh, Michigan uh, winning you know, the national championship last night or, or yesterday, uh, it, and the Ravens winning that means the Harbaugh's are going to be on top of the football championships this year I'm pretty sure we all have either the Ravens or the Niners winning <laughs> hey, well I hope so well I'd like to thank you for this interview and thank you for taking time out of your day but the uh, final it's, it's been great I'm sorry thank you <laughs> <laughs> thank you very much for your time and we debut January 24th, so stay tuned for your interview. Thank you very, very much. Uh, it, was, it was my pleasure, guys. Thank you so much for having me, and I really did appreciate it.